E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos aqui no DCS World F16 Viper. Essa sequência de vídeos que eu estou postando são dos arquivos lá do canal do Matt Agner, aquele CEO que posta os vídeos acadêmicos do F16 Viper. Como os vídeos deles são públicos, eu vou reeditar eles e colocar aqui no nosso canal com legendas do YouTube. É, vou colocar a legenda do YouTube lá, vou copiar o vídeo e vou postar aqui no canal. Como os vídeos dele, eu já falei, são públicos, não vai ter problema. E como o meu canal não tem monitoração, ou seja, eu não ganho dinheiro para postar vídeo no YouTube, eu acredito que não vai ter problema. <coughs> Mesmo assim, lá no... Na descrição do vídeo eu vou colocar todos os links dos arquivos original do Matt Egna. F16 Viper, acompanha aí! Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In a future DCS World update, we'll be adding the initial implementation of the AGM-65 Maverick Tactical Air Surface Missile for the F-16. The Maverick provides standoff ranges between 6 and 8 miles, and it's ideal for attacking short-range air defense systems and armor. It's also a launch and leave weapon. Our F-16 can be loaded with four versions of the Maverick, the AGM-65D and G imaging infrared, and the AGM-65H and K that are optically guided. Whereas the D and H versions have 126 pound warheads, the G and K version have larger 300 pound warheads. The larger warhead versions are better suited to ships, bunkers, and larger structures. Additionally, the D and G versions allow automatic target handoff from the targeting pod. A bit later, we'll add Maverick Seeker bore sighting, dual targeting, and some changes to the HOTAS. For now, though, this will allow you to get started employing this weapon and running Mavericks on foreheads. Let's get started. Okay, so before we jump into the mission itself, let's take a look at some of the HOTAS commands that we're going to be using. So, of course, I have the uh, F-16C SIM selected uh, here in the category. Let's first go to the uh, Axis commands. And the big one here is going to be the radar cursor right here, uh, X and Y. Uh, and I have this uh, map to the mini stick on my throttle right now. Uh, coming down, let's go to the HOTAS category. And the big ones here, uh, first is the uh, display management switch, or the uh, DEMIS, right here. So we have uh, DEMIS down, left, right, and up. You can see the key commands here. And again, I have this uh, map to my stick. Uh, the next is the uh, target management switch, or the TEMIS. Again, uh, down, left, right, and up. You can see the key commands here. And also, again, I have assigned it to my HOTAS. Another big one is the uh, manual range knob, uh, which I don't have uh, keys assigned to here, but I have it actually mapped to the throttle. And the last is the uh, expand button, which, again, I don't have assigned to a key right now, but I have it assigned to my stick, as you can see here as well. So those are the uh, main ones I'm going to be using. Oh, and the last one, of course, is to release the weapon. I'll be using the weapon release uh, button to press here, which uh, uh, right alt space, which, again, of course, I have mapped to the stick. Okay, let's jump into the mission now. Okay, so let's take a look at using the Maverick with the Viper. And uh, be forewarned, this is a bit uh, more complex than the Maverick for the Hornet and other aircraft, so you may want to watch this video uh, more than just once. So, let's first go to the Air to Ground Master Mode. And we do that, we have the uh, Maverick page up on the Stores Management page, or the SMIS. Uh, we see we're in Air to Ground Mode. We have three different modes of delivery, the Visual Mode, Bore Mode, and Pre-Plan Mode. And we'll keep it a Pre-Plan Mode for now, but we'll talk about all these uh, during the course of this video. Uh, next, we have our inventory where we can see what's loaded on the jet. And next to that, we have the control page. And then from the control page, if we wish, we can determine uh, when the Mavericks would automatically start to power on based on our relative position to a steer point. So again, if I were to choose this, I could have the Maverick of the selected type 
uh, power on if I am north of steer point two. But I can, of course, change the steer point, say, to steer point three, enter and change the cardinal direction of north, east, south, west, back to north. Let's come out of the control page. Uh, we see that we have a single 65 delta loaded, ready. Uh, below that is the uh, manual power. Let's go ahead and power this on. And then below that is the ripple function. Uh, in this case, I have two Mavericks and are both loaded on Lao 117 single rail launchers. But if I had a situation where I had multiple Mavericks on Lao 88s, uh, then I can determine how many Mavericks to launch per pulse using this function. And then finally, uh, the three here in the corner indicates that I have a 65 delta on station three over here. Let's change weapon type to a 65 golf. Again, I'll go to pre-plan mode, manual power on. And we have a seven now indicating that the 65 golf is here on station seven. Uh, briefly up here in the HUD, when I'm in pre-plan mode, I have an asthma steering line in the box. Uh, indicating the uh, flight direction of where the targeting pod is currently looking. And speaking of the pod, let's go ahead and turn the uh, laser on and bring up the pod on the left MPD. Now in this uh, little video, I have uh, several ZSU 20, uh, 57-2s at an airbase at steer point two. So let's uh, go to the ICP and change that to steer point two. And because I'm in pre-mode, the targeting pod is automatically looking at that location. And on the stick, let's hit the expand button to change our field of view. And we can use the uh, manual range buttons to zoom in and out. A lot of smoke here. Let's uh, go team and slash short for a camera change. And we can start to see some stuff. Now let's go to a black hot. Yeah, now I can really see much better. Okay, let's keep that there for now. And back on the right. Now, once the uh, Maverick is done spooling up and ready to display video, it won't actually display video here on the SMIS page. Instead, it'll be doing it on the weapon page. And to bring up the weapon page, uh, let's do that now. Uh, we have an open OSB here. And let's uh, map the weapon uh, page to that. So double press. Uh, we have the list of pages here. We have weapon, press it, and now we have the weapon page up. And note, we have a not timed out message. And that's because it takes the uh, Maverick about three minutes to uh, spool up. And we haven't reached that point yet. So we'll, uh, we'll sit tight for now. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and make this soy by going uh, Demus F short. And we have our polarity indication. Right now it's uh, HOC for hot over cold. But if we go Demus left short, we can go to uh, cold over hot. And then one more time, we can go to area. And we only have this option for the uh, golf and kilo versions uh, because those have a uh, force correlate mode, uh, whereas the others use a centroid track. A centroid track is looking for a uh, very definitive contrast, either a visual IR to track a target, like a tank. Whereas a, cent uh, a uh, force correlate is actually building an overall scene to determine the pointing. But because we're going after uh, a triple A piece here, we're going to be going to a centroid track. So let's go to hot over cold. And the biggest difference here you'll see once the uh, video comes online is the symbology color. I'm going to keep it there for now. Now, with the pre-planned attack, the biggest advantage here is that we can use the targeting pod to automatically slave the Maverick line of sight to where the targeting pod is looking. Now, within the targeting pod, we have two different handoff modes. We have manual handoff, indicated by man, and then we have auto handoff. And the difference here is if we have a delta or golf version, or essentially an IR version, uh, not only will you have the uh, Maverick automatically slew in its line of sight to the targeting pod, but if you command a handoff and the Maverick Seeker is in range, it'll also automatically lock up the Maverick Seeker to the target, which can be pretty handy. Whereas if you're in manual mode, you'll still have the correlation of the line of sight between the two sensors, but you'll actually have to go to the Maverick page to then actually designate and lock up that target on the Maverick. Okay, let's go ahead and start uh, coming into the target now that we have the video up. Yeah, 
may also notice on both the pages over the uh, station of seven we have an s and that indicates that the uh, maverick is in slave mode but it has not been uh, uh, given a lock command uh, to correlate with the tgp yet and we'll be doing that here in a minute Okay, here's our target area ahead with the smoke. And let's pause here for a moment. Up here on the HUD and also on the Maverick display, we have a LAR or launch acceptable region with the max range of 20 miles. Our current range is 14 miles. And the bracket here at the top indicates maximum range and the bottom is minimum range. So right now we can see we're a bit out of maximum range still. So we'll hold tight here for a second. In the meantime, we'll make our 2GP soy. We'll put the targeting crosshairs over the target area and keep it there for now. Again, we have not commanded a handoff quite yet. And Maverick soy, let's uh, do expand mode to zoom in a bit. Back to the TGP. Okay, 11 miles from target, 10 miles, almost there. Nine. Okay, now to command the handoff, we're gonna be going team us forward short. And we did that. We now on the Maverick page have handoff from progress station seven, indicated on station seven Maverick the uh, targeting pod has handed off the location to the Maverick to lock up that target. Uh, we can also see that we have a one over the station for the line of sight being correlated. It's on pause for a second. It very, very briefly went to a T indicating that the TGP lock command was given. And then it very quickly went to a C indicating the uh, handoff uh, is now completed and that the Maverick is now tracking that target, which you can see by the collapsed uh, cursors, uh, crosshairs on the target on the Maverick page. Up here on the HUD, again, the square indicates where the targeting pod is looking, and the circle indicates where the Maverick is looking. You can see, again, that these are also correlated together. Uh, in the LAR, we're eight miles uh, well within range. So let's unpause, hold down the weapon release button, and rifle. Now just waiting for the shack. And shack. Okay, so those are some of the basics of the uh, pre-planned mode. And this is probably the most useful and the one that most of you would probably be um, often using. But the other two modes, let's talk about. Uh, first, actually, let's bring up the uh, Delta, bring up its weapon page, and let's talk about Boar now. And we can see that we have the Maverick page also with Soy. And up on the HUD now, we have a cross. And using the TDC, we can slew it. And notice that when we bank and pitch and move the aircraft, that the cross does not uh, stay ground stabilized. Instead, it stays relative on the HUD. And this allows you to use it almost as a search function to uh, fly through an area and search a swath of land just using uh, the Maverick Seeker. And of course, you can still designate an attack if you wish, but this can be a handy function if you don't have a targeting pod available. Uh, probably more uh, functional though is the visual mode. And we do that, we now have, you can see a box that is caged to the velocity vector. And the box indicates where the Maverick Seeker is currently looking, as you can see. 
using TDC, just like the boresight mode, we can move it around. The big difference here now is as we start to move over the aircraft, you can see that the Maverick and that box are ground stabilized. So this is a much more handy function when you have a, a target area that you can designate the box and then uh, move on to different targets. Uh, we can go TMSF short to recage it back to the FPM now. So let's go back to this target area. Okay, we we'll go back to our Maverick display. Let's uh, go ahead and expand to change our field of view. Okay, once we get it to a location we like on the HUD, then what I'll do is I'll make the uh, uh, Maverick display on the MPD soy. Then I'll use that to slew around with a bit more control. So let's look for a target. I think that guy is dead. Let's try this one. Probably a bit out of range here still. So to manually initiate uh, Maverick lock, we'll go ahead and go Timus 4 short. We got a good lock with the collapsed crosshairs. And also, again, you can see on the HUD, the circle indicates where the Maverick is looking, the box is where the targeting pod is looking. Press and hold the weapon release button and rifle. Shack. Anyhow, folks, that's an overview of some of the initial functions of the Maverick for the Viper. I uh, very much hope you enjoy this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.